Okay, well, welcome to <clears throat> Muskie Tip Monday. And uh, on today's episode, what we're going to be doing is doing something that we should have done on the first episode, which is really how to properly care for a muskie. And that goes for the point at which you catch it to the point of which you release it. So from beginning to end, what tools do you need? What are some common things that you need to focus on? So this is really important. There's not enough videos of this online. Uh, I think there, everybody needs to do a video on it just to gain awareness for properly caring for the fish. Um, but let's start from the very beginning. So <clears throat> you have the fish on and you get it into the net, right? I would say the first thing that you have to keep in mind is Number one, make sure that you have a really, really good net. Now, uh, the one that I have here is the uh, extra large drifter uh, musky uh, net, and um, it's got a 60 pound weight limit, so you could put a 60 pound dumbbell in there and fit it uh, in there. And, you know, it's great because it's got a real wide hoop, okay, and it also has a very deep, deep net to it. So you wanna be able to have that net be about three feet deep if possible, um, so that when you put that fish in the net, it's got, you know, you're keeping it in the water after the catch, and that's the key, uh, because you want the fish to be able to revive and catch its breath. Think of it this way, on a 95 degree day, you run a 100 yard dash with a 100 pound weight on your back, and then at the end of it, you hold your breath. That would be what it's like for the muskie after fighting really hard on the line, and then you take it out of the water. So keep that in mind, that's what it's like for the fish. Now, when the fish is in the net, you, you do wanna let it recover, but first you have to take the hooks out. So uh, one of the uh, <clears throat> really important tools you wanna have are some long needle nose pliers. That lets you get uh, you know down into the fish's mouth without putting your hand in the mouth, and um, it really lets you kinda get those hooks out. So these are really important to have. You can uh, get them from Joe Booker's website. I really like them. Um, and then of course, if the hook is caught in a really bad spot, you're gonna want some bolt cutters, some hook cutters. You can get these from Joe Booker as well or get them on Amazon. Um, you know, again, if, if the hook's in a bad spot and you try to take it out, um, you know, the, the fish could end up bleeding, uh, bleeding out or, or doing damage to the gills or whatever. So you wanna make sure you have some, uh, some bolt cutters here as well. There are gonna be rare situations, but there will be situations in which you have to open the fish's mouth um, you know, with, with a tool so that you can get in there with your pliers. Uh, and that's where jaw spreaders are really gonna be nice. So getting uh, these jaw spreaders in here, they unhook like this, and then uh, you know you can hold the fish's mouth open. And then of course, when you unhook the fish, um, you know, let them revive for a little bit, let them catch his breath. And when you get to the point where you actually have to take the fish out of the net, make sure that you don't just pick it up by the, um, you know, by the gill uh, vertically. Uh, or, you know, some people use those like, um, I don't know what they're called, but those grips that they that they latch onto the fish and they hold it vertical. That's a big no-no because um, it puts a lot of stress on the fish's jaw and uh, on its spine. So make sure that you have a hand underneath it. There's really uh, two main ways you can hold a muskie. It's right under that gill where the back of your hand is against the actual gills and you put your hand kind of on the inside uh, of the fish up the gill and then you can uh, use your other hand to support it. Uh, or another way that I see a lot of river musky fishermen do this. They kind of put their hand under the throat of the musky and then put their hand all the way back by the tail. So you can do either one, but uh, make sure that there's some good support there. So now you take the fish out, you take a picture, you do, go to do a measurement. Uh, for so many years, people were just kind of throwing the musky down uh, on the boat and letting it flop around and, and that's just a big no-no. You don't want to wipe the slime off of the fish because that slime is very protective. Um, it fights bacteria, it fights um, uh, you know, all kinds of things that would be harmful to a muskie. So um, what you really want to do is get a bump board. Um, I have actually made my own bump board, but you can buy these as well. And um, obviously half of this is 30 inches, but uh, I made another half of it as well. So it's uh, uh, six, about 60 inches, this bump board. Um, and you want to make sure you dip it in the water first and, and make sure that that surface is wet so that none of that slime is coming off of the fish. All right. So now you've gotten that measurement, you've caught your first 50 inch muskie, congratulations, now it's time to put the fish back in the water. And uh, it's actually more simple than you think it is because all you really uh, need to do is support the fish and make sure it's upright as it's being released. You do not want to uh, 
uh, take the fish and rock it back and forth or pull it backwards. And the pulling of the backwards is what really gets to me because, you know, fish were not designed to have water flow through the back of the gills backwards. They were designed uh, and created to have water go through the mouth and out the gills, and that's how they breathe. And so the best thing to do is face it either into the current, uh, if you're in a river or stream, and, uh, and into the wind if you're in a lake. And that allows uh, the water to kind of flow into the mouth and out the gills, allowing it, uh, you to revive the fish. In those warm water periods, when the water's over 70 degrees, it can be a little, it can take a little bit longer to revive the fish. Um, and in the cold water periods, normally they'll take right off. But uh, if they're having trouble at all taking off, uh, give them a tap between the eyes. And for whatever reason, muskies go crazy when their heads get touched. So, um, you know, you can rub your hand on the side of its gill plate or give them a tap between the eyes. That always seems to work. With pike, I just take my tip of my rod and snap, smack them in the back and that kind of shocks them and they take off. But muskie uh, are different. So you're gonna wanna make sure that, uh, you know, you're just caring for them, holding them upright, making sure that uh, they, they take off. And, and I would honestly, I would hang around the spot where you let it where you let it go, where you released it uh, for, for a few minutes. Don't just take off because, you know, if that fish is struggling and it kind of floats back up, you wanna make sure you're there to, to help revive it. Um, the other thing I would mention too, make sure that when you take a picture with the fish in a measurement, make sure it's really not out of the water any longer than you can hold your breath. The reason I've done this episode really is to just uh, gain some awareness around how to properly care for fish. So many people kill muskies every year uh, because they improperly handle them. Uh, they tell you, ah, oh, the fish swam off, you know, it's, it's no problem. Uh, but you know, delayed mortality sets in and uh, a lot of those uh, chemicals get released from the fish after they're released and um, they come floating back up um, and actually what most people don't realize is the majority of fish actually sink when they die. Uh, the, the ones that float are only floating because their air bladders were filled from um, changing uh, in, in the water column uh, drastically. So a lot of fish will actually die and, and then they'll sink when they do. So um, there's fish that die every year because people don't handle them properly. But if you handle them properly, you can help sustain the species and uh, make it so that we all have fish to catch uh, for our future, but also for the future of our children and our children's children. So uh, that's all I have for today. I'm done talking. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you next time.